Chapter 44, The Power of Panamera Its speed was slightly reduced, but it still seemed to be as fast as my all-out sprint. At that moment, the ballista was finally ready, and the arrows started firing one after another. The dragon's eyesight was so good that it moved to avoid them, but it couldn't avoid all the dozens of ballista bolts. The ballista bolts shot through its body, wings, and legs. Around five of them hit it, maybe? The ballista was so large that it took a long time to fire. I increased the length of the rod and the number of gears to draw the bow with the principle of a lever, but it may require more power than before. While pondering this, I looked at the dragon through the half-opened gate. The dragon had lost its balance and was rolling on the ground with a scream, stopping just beside the road. I wondered what I would do if the arrow was bounced off the dragon's scales, but it seemed to have gone through without incident. Hurry up, prepare the second shot. You can shoot immediately when you're ready. Immediately after I gave the order, the arrows were released all at once. Everyone was loading up for the second shot, so it seemed to have taken a while. There were 50 ballistas already installed throughout the city, but only 15 units on the front side of the city wall. In other words, only 15 arrows can be fired at the same time. Even though it was bleeding, the dragon jumped to the side again and evaded all the bolts. The second shot did no damage to the dragon, although the bolts pierced deep into the street. However, the damage from the arrow that pierced its torso in the first shot was so great that the dragon roared and dropped its stance low. I, I'm saved. Nah, you managed to survive. And then Ortho and the others came back to the city wall. Ortho and the others breathed a sigh of relief, but it was not over yet. Oh, I won't forget what you did to me. Zara, breathing hard and looking like he was dying, reached the castle wall. Behind him, I could see the dragon kicking the ground as it readied itself. Then, a second fire javelin is launched. Fire javelin! At Panamera's command, a mass of flames appeared and took the form of a spear. This will stop them for a moment. Everyone, evacuate to the village. We don't have enough men here. Panamera instructed and unleashed a spear of flame. The dragon took an evasive stance in response. However, the flaming spear slightly changed its trajectory in front of the target and moved as if it was tracking it. Then it exploded near the direct hit. A violent pillar of flame erupted, burning the dragon's face and parts of its body. The dragon screamed, turned over, and took two steps back. That was the true essence of flame magic. If it wasn't for the dragon, it would be terrifyingly powerful and versatile. The flashy effect would be good on the battlefield. While I was surprised, I was late catching up with Panamera. Her battlefield experience was different. All right, all right. Everyone. Let's run to the village. I repeated Panamera's instructions again, taking a step back to tell the others. We all started running towards the village at once. The soldiers led the way, and the villagers who had come to build the walls ran as fast as they could to the village. Van Sama, I'll handle the back. D stayed at the back with his men around us. No. We're all running to the village. People in front. Let the rest of the village prepare the ballista. I yell at D as I run and give instructions to the people in front. Just then, I pass Espada, who stops to look at me. Espada. I yelled his name as I turned around. Espada looked at the dragon coming towards us and started to prepare his magic. When the dragon reached the fortification wall, it kicked the ground and jumped up, placing its upper body on top of the wall and attaching itself to the wall with the claws of its front paws piercing the inner wall. I gasped at the green forest dragon glaring at me as if to check on me in that state. I had been so proud after defeating the armored lizard. That thing was different from any other magical beast around. With its wings damaged, it had no choice but to run on the ground, and yet its power was all the same. Espada, let's get out of here. 
I shout, but Espada doesn't move. If you don't run fast, I won't run either. I exclaimed again. Then Espada showed his profile with a thin smile. That's a problem, I'm afraid. Well, let's just buy ourselves some time and head back, Vansama, after you. I said we have to go back together. Espada chuckled and activated her magic against the dragon, who had easily climbed over the castle walls. A huge wall of earth appeared in front of the dragon, which used the wall as a launching pad, and the dragon crashed face-first into it. The earth rumbled, and the earth wall created by Espada collapsed, but the dragon also stopped moving as it was buried in the rubble. Hmm. I guess that bought us some time. Espada muttered as he stroked his chin between his fingers, then turned on his heel and came towards us. But it was too late. Yes, now walking. Run. I'll buy Espada a bottle of your favorite red wine if you try. It's hard for my old bones to run, but I'll do my best. I scolded him, and Espada ran as fast as he could jog. Van Sama, I will help you with Espada Sama, go ahead. Kamsin and I switch places and I start running again. We were almost at the main gate of the village, but it felt strangely far away, Ortho and the others had already done a lot of running, so they were running slow. Boy! We're in position! Panamera shouted loudly, as she was on top of the village wall. Looking over, all the ballista on the bulwark were already in position with the villagers who would be the firing squad. Load the arrows and prepare to fire. You have to draw them in, or they won't hit. Just make sure you're ready. I instructed as I ran, and the villagers hurried to begin preparations. Perhaps because it was a ballista of a size they were used to, their preparations were completed more quickly than ours. What about me? Can I move on my own? Panamera asked me, and I inwardly felt a little surprised as I answered. Also, please use the magic you just used to stop it at the last moment. That's where we'll aim the ballista. Panamera laughed in amusement as she replied. Good plan. But this is the first time my magic has been used to halt someone. Sorry about that, could you let me off with some dragon meat? Ha 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 ha. All right. Now, that meat is about to start moving. I turned around at Panamera's words, and sure enough, the dragon was pushing away the debris to reveal itself. It's coming! I shouted loudly and turned my attention back to the entrance of the village. Chapter 45 Defeating Dragons As we run toward the village's last defensive wall, we hear a low, earth-shaking roar from behind us and the footsteps of the dragon as it starts to run with such force that the ground shakes. Behind me, a short distance away, I could see Espada and Cam Sin. I thought about telling Espada to use his magic, but there was no way I could get there in time. It would be better to draw it closer to us and shoot it with the ballistas. But it's a delicate distance. If the ballista is evaded, as it was at the castle wall, it will take time for our ballista to fire a second time. It might be able to hold them back, but in that case, everything would depend on Panamela's magic. If that was the case, should we use Panamela's magic to stop it and then use the ballista as planned? No, that would be a difficult distance. If the distance was too great, there would definitely be a lag. If I can somehow buy enough time for Espada and the others to escape this way. The moment I said that, something passed by me at a great speed. Leave it to me. The one who jumped out was D, holding the big sword I had made. She was wearing armor and carrying a large sword in both hands, and she was running faster than I could run at full speed. Leave it to me. Vice Commander, you're fast. Lagging behind, ARV and Ro also ran. They were both equipped with large shields and long swords. The three of us are fine. I shouted in surprise, but D was already running past Espada. See ya, hey ya. With spirit, he swung down from the top. The dragon didn't care and tried to slice through D with its claws. The speed was even. 
The claws and the sword clashed beautifully as Dee brought his sword down to meet the dragon's claws. With a thud, Dee's sword hits the ground. Then, two of the dragon's claws were severed, and it rolled on the ground. With an ear-piercing screech, the dragon shook its face. Then, it spun its body halfway around, gaining momentum. Ayaya. Doria. ARV and Ro appeared next to D in his defenseless state, rushing forward while holding their shields, and were blown away by the dragon's tail. ARV and Ro were flung away while being caught by the shield, and D, who was next to them, was blown up as well. As the three of them rolled around like a ball, Espada stopped and activated his magic. A wall of earth appeared to hide D and the others, and the dragon destroyed it with a swing of his arm. Run! Everyone! I shout, and Espada and Kamsin come running towards us first. Those two should be fine now. D and the others were in trouble, but perhaps because they were superhuman, they quickly regained their bearings after being blown up so much. Retreat! Ha! At the same time as Dee's call, the three of them came running towards the village at the same time. Dee, who was supposed to be the oldest, was the fastest. At the back of the pack, behind ARV and Ro, is an angry dragon. Hi Oa! As ARV approaches with a half cry and a scream, we decided that the dragon had been distracted enough. Panamela-san. Yes. I called out her name, and Panamela replied as if she'd been waiting for me, thrusting one hand forward. Fire javelin. The magic was activated, and a spear of flame came at the dragon's face, which was aiming for ARV. However, the dragon slowed down on the spot and braced itself by wrapping itself with its wings. The flaming spear struck it directly, causing a pillar of flame to erupt. Ah! Ballista! Only the western half of the village, fire all at once! I had a bad premonition, so I quickly gave such an order. Immediately afterward, the dragon spread its wings all at once in the pillar of flames and instantly extinguished the flames that had been burning. Then, arrows fired from the top of the village wall rained down on it. The dragon twisted and avoided most of the mass of the bolts. Only a few of the bolts hit it in the shoulders, hind legs, and the tip of the tail. But the bolts did indeed damage the dragon. The dragon crumbled to the ground, slumped diagonally. After confirming its appearance, I give the order again. Ballista! Fire all remaining shots! The moment I said that, all the ballistas were fired at once. The dragon twisted and turned as it fell, but it was barely able to avoid hitting its head. It was hit by several iron bolts from the markings on its body, piercing the base of its wings and its legs. It was a clear fatal wound. With a final scream, the dragon fell over sideways. Ballista. Prepare for the next round of bolts and stand by. I give the order to prepare to continue the battle. Perhaps in line with that, Panamela also started chanting her magic. D, can I check? I asked D, who was close to the dragon, and she responded by raising his sword. Everyone watched with bated breath as D slowly approached the dragon. D walks right up to it and holds up his sword. With the tip of his sword, he pokes the bloody dragon in the arm. Immediately, the dragon's limp neck moves and its large mouth closes in on D, ready to swallow him. NNN. D dodged the dragon's head and brought his greatsword down. He slashed it with a single swing. The severed head of the dragon rolled on the ground. Ka, we won! Ro shouted, confirming that the dragon's head had fallen. Yeah. That one should be okay now. Confirming it with my own eyes, I looked at the villagers on top of the wall and shouted as loud as I could. Our village has won! Raise the battle cry! At my declaration, the village erupted in loud cheers. Are you okay, Vansama? Are you hurt? When I returned to the village, Till and Arte came running. I'm fine. 
Rather, keep an eye on Espada, who had a long run, and D and the others, who took a hit from the dragon. Wow, I understand. But first, Vansama. Come on, this way. With that, he made me sit on a chair he pulled out from a nearby house. Ah, but I was tired, so it was a relief to sit down. That was a good command, boy. And again, congratulations on defeating the dragon. They are beings that could destroy a medium-sized city. No doubt word will get around about this fact. Panamela walked towards us, looking in a good mood. The soldiers also looked happy for the moment as they walked towards us, chatting with other soldiers nearby. The villagers were laughing and rejoicing, as if they had no sense of reality, but I think they were more excited about the armored lizard incident. Defeating a dragon, huh? It was pretty close, though, if it weren't for Panamelisan, Espada, and D.N.O., it wouldn't have been possible without Panamelisan's men. When I implied that I was lucky, Panamela smiled wryly at me. To be honest, if that green forest dragon had attacked in the Count's homeland, the city would have been half destroyed. At the very least, part of the city walls would have collapsed and there would have been hundreds of casualties. Is that so? If it's a city where the Count's residence is located, it would have been properly defended, though. Hmm. It's not every day you get a butler named Espada or a master like D who can cut off a dragon's head with a single blow. Above all, that ridiculously powerful ballista. I didn't think it could even penetrate the scales of a dragon. I nodded with a grin as she said this in a slightly dumbfounded voice. We're all very proud of our men, you know. ARV, Ro, and Cam Sin are going to be just as strong as D. After that, we'll have to improve the ballista. We should be able to fire it at least ten times in a row. I feel like I just heard a horrible statement, but oh well. First things first, we need to hold a ceremony for defeating a dragon. The first is Didano, who now has the title of Dragon Slayer. The second is Van, the commander and lord, and I'll ask Espada to join the list. And that's what she told me. What? D is going to be a Dragon Slayer? Chapter 46 Dragon Slayers of Our Village from the second floor of the Lord's Mansion, I appeared with Till and Toe, unfolded the letter and read it out. Below us were Espada, D, and the villagers, as well as Ortho and his party and Bal, Arte, and Panamera's soldiers. It was a little over two hundred people, but it felt like a lot more when I actually saw them in front of me. Air, the defeat of the Green Forest Dragon, also known as the Lord of the Forest. The person who has done the most important work in defeating it will be awarded. The award will be presented by Viscount Panamera Carrera Cayenne, head of the Viscount Cayenne family, who holds the title of Viscount. The award ceremony was to be conducted in an abbreviated style, but when Panamera gallantly appeared from the second floor of the Lord's Mansion, the atmosphere in the place changed. Seeing the tension on the faces of the villagers made Van, the Lord, think about his own dignity. Panamera slowly looked at everyone's faces for a moment and then sternly opened his mouth. The green forest dragon that was defeated by all of us here this time is an existence that would normally require the mobilization of court magicians along with the knights. A village or a small town would definitely be destroyed, and even a fortified city in that area would suffer considerable damage. When I told them that, the villagers made a noise. But this small village survived. Not only that, no one was killed or injured, and the only damage was to a portion of the city wall under construction and two ballistas. This is an unbelievable accomplishment. Panamaris' words were met with an exclamation of admiration from the villagers. I know how you feel, but you need to be quiet for now. Panamaris' expression relaxed slightly at everyone's reaction and she opens her mouth. I will call out the names of those who have contributed greatly to this accomplishment. The first is D, Vice Commander of the Marquis Furcio's Knights, for cutting off the head of a green forest dragon over 15 meters long with a single blow, thus deciding the outcome of this battle. Therefore, the first merit goes to Vice Commander D. 
At these words, the village erupted in cheers, and Panamera waited for the cheers to die down before opening her mouth again. Panamera waits for the cheers to die down and then speaks again, next is Espada, an exceptional user of the magic of the four elements, whose magic skills are beyond description, as he has twice saved the day and stopped the dragon from moving. Therefore, the second merit goes to Espada. At these words, a murmur of admiration rose in the village. They were like, really? Maybe it would be difficult for the villagers to understand the greatness of a magician. Finally, Panamera took one last look at me before speaking. Finally, the fourth son of the Marquis Furcio, Van Nei Furcio, whose knowledge, energy, and resourcefulness are unbelievable for an eight-year-old, and whose unprecedented use of magic has greatly strengthened the defense of the village in a short period of time. His achievements played an important role in the defeat of the Green Forest Dragon, and as the Lord, he took the lead in the battle to defeat it. Therefore, the third merit shall be given to Van Nei Furcio. The moment Panamera said this, a loud cheer erupted like an angry roar. Even though I was in shock, I forced myself to wave my hand to the crowd. As a result, the cheers were so loud that it reminded me of the cheers of an idol. Hi, I'm Van, everyone's idol. One silver coin for each handshake. And just like that, the ceremony ended successfully. After that, the Great Material Stripping Festival was held, but this time, with a hundred strong soldiers under Viscount Panamera, the materials were collected at a great speed. Hey! What's with this sword? Don't tell me this was all made by that boy? Panamera, who had just cut off the dragon's fangs, shouted as she looked back at us. It's a sword that specializes in sharpness for stripping materials. Well, it's a practical one, too. We gave them out to all the soldiers, there were over a hundred of them. I thought it wasn't a special sword. Five gold coins will make you one sword. Panamera looked at me as if she couldn't believe what she was seeing. In just two days, the stripping of materials was complete, and once again, the materials warehouse was no longer able to hold them. So, I built a huge warehouse with a basement behind the new city wall. It's enough to house two or three dragons. Most of the walls were completed, so all that remained was Belitis and the drawbridge. Bell's eyes were marked with dollar all the time while we were stripping the dragons of their materials, but he finally calmed down and resumed business at the store. However, when he finally realized that his brother Rango had come back to the village, Bell's eyes once again turned into dollar marks. Well, I have a lot of things I want to sell and buy, so I understand. I was also curious about the extent of Rango's return, so I ran towards the city wall with Bell. Incidentally, as soon as Rango arrived in the village, he was astonished to see the wall suddenly built. It seemed that he had asked the chairman of the trading company to lead a caravan back to the village on the condition that he would personally make up for any deficit, but he hadn't expected that a huge wall would be built while he was away for a few weeks. When I went to Rango's place, I was surprised this time. The caravan consisted of five large carriages, three medium-sized carriages, and twenty adventurers as escorts. In addition, there were five merchants, including Rango, accompanying the caravan. There were also five slave helpers. Oh, brother! What is this? When did they build such an amazing wall? Rango asked in a loud voice when he noticed Bell. However, Bell put his hands on Rango's shoulders as he approached and talked without expression. This wall is incredible indeed, but we still have a lot of work to do. Well, something more serious. Bell looks away from Rango, who wrinkled his brow, and looks at me. Do you mind if I show him to the new warehouse? Sure. With a quick reply, Bell led Rango to the warehouse, the caravan Rango had brought with him also following behind, moving beneath the city walls. The adventurers and other merchants passed by, bowing and greeting each other. Moments later, a startled voice comes from inside the new warehouse. Whoa, whoa, a dragon! At the sound of Rango's voice, the caravan's merchants and adventurers all disappeared into the warehouse at once. 
Then, there were more screams. This time, it was because there were more people. The screams were so loud that it sounded like people packed in a roller coaster reaching its peak. I wonder how much it will cost. I muttered, and Bell smiled like a villain, holding up and snapping his fingers. One dragon. It's a large green forest dragon. And to top it all off, I got scales, claws, fangs, eyes, magic stone, and it's almost intact. Probably a hundred white gold coins. From there, it will be auctioned off in the royal capital, and the price will be at least 150 white gold coins. If a gold coin was a million and a large gold coin was 10 million, then a white gold coin was a hundred million? So you're telling me that a dragon is worth 10 billion yen? What's with the jumbo lottery? And what about the auction afterwards? Then, what's a jumbo? I asked, only to have Bell ask me back. I mean the auction? When I asked again, Bell regained his composure and showed once more a villainous smile. It's an auction held in the royal capital. Any merchant association that is a member of the Merchant Guild can participate. Whenever there is a national treasure-worthy item, it will be auctioned. If it's the material of that green forest dragon, it will definitely exceed 150 white gold coins. I see. Then, if you take away the transportation costs, the auction fees, and the profit of the business association, how much is the profit for Bell and Rango? Bell rolled his eyes at my line. With all due respect, I thought Bansama was hardly a child, but I've been reassured again. If you were a foolish son of one of those noblemen, then some of you would probably say that I already splurged offering a large sum of fifty white gold coins. The net result for us was probably three to five white gold coins. Still, that is a huge profit, nearly worth betting your life on. Bell smiled happily, and I crossed my arms and twisted my neck and said, Why don't you just make a business association? Is it so difficult to make a business association? When I said that, Bell froze, his eyes wide in shock.